fellow guitar geeks! In this Fender box is a Jagstang, the third iteration of the Jagstang. We had the original back in the 90s, then we had a reissue in the early 2000s. Now we've got this, the Mexican reissue. It's my second ever Jagstang, and uh, in this video I'm going to unbox it, we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to grab my DS1, my DS2, and probably some other pedals as well. Stick it through the Fender amp and see if we can recreate some Nirvana riffs. It's in a soft case, and it was not aware of that. Gig bag is one of those standard Fender gig bags. A little bit of padding up here, not a lot of padding down there, and a fair amount of padding down here. There we go, right. It is the red one. <laughs> okay, headstock reveal. Hang tags. Really dark, nice looking neck. That's a beautiful looking neck. I am, uh, sorry, fretboard. I'm very excited. I am terrible at getting these squeaky bags off. Okay, that's a lot more orange than I was expecting. You see it just being slowly revealed? Ugh. Right, there it is. Love it or hate it, there it is. Um, get that yummy silica gel out of the way. Oh, it's not silica, it's a unit pack. Wow, gone up in the world. Hang tags. Um, I love it. I love the way it sits on my leg. I love the feel. There's a little bit, a little bit of, of fret um, sprouting. A little bit. It's a little bit sharp just there. It's not exactly perfect. That's a surprise. That needs work. Um, okay. Uh, the colour, as I said, is more burnt orange than I was expecting. I'm just looking up on my, on my monitor up there. That, that's odd. To you, it, it's, it's almost brownish. Um, okay. We've got uh, Master Volume, Master Tone. That's weird that they're not, they're, they're pointing that way. Odd. Then we've got white switches, which I'll have to dive in to find out exactly what they do, because I've forgotten. Um, I'll have to tune it up and um, play around with it. Let's go in search of the trem bar. That fell down. So, we also get, we get a little Fender booklet and some Allen keys, three Allen keys, to adjust all the things that need to be adjusted. Where's the truss rod? Oh man, the truss rod's in there. Let's see, a really vintage style truss rod. Okay, just gonna poke a little hole through the bag to get the, the, the really short trem bar out. That is one of the shortest trem bars I've ever seen. Not that uh, size matters that much, but there's the, where is it? There's the AZ, and then putting that next to it, actually, it is, it's not, it's not that much shorter than the AZ, but it, it looks it because it's angled. Why does that look so much shorter? Regardless, it's there. I mean, do we, do we even need it? There's, it fits in there. It comes straight back out again. Um, yeah, it works. Nothing seems to stick. It's got these really tiny skinny frets, really vintage, um, Slim and short. Wow. Uh, I've got to stop playing that E chord. It's not in tune. I love the way it sits on my knee, or my thigh, I should say. I'm going to take the hang tags off. It feels, apart from those fret ends, it feels really nice. And I know the, the fret ends are, are a bit of a pain, and I'm not excusing them, but this is not the sort of a guitar that I'm going to be going up here on, if I'm honest. I think. I think sort of about there is enough. Maybe there, or there. <laughs> right, let's tune it up and um, we'll go over some sounds and some specs and I'll get the Boss DS1 and DS2, etc., and we'll make some noise. As a player, it feels really compact. The, I mean, it's based on a Jaguar and a Mustang, if you didn't know, hence the name Jagstang. 
So, the Jaguar and Mustang body put together that Kurt Cobain um, just took two photos of two guitars, spliced them, cut them together, and came up with this, some people say, ugly shape. I dig it, I dig it hard. I love this shape, I think it's brilliant. And before I've even plugged it in, I can tell you that I prefer this guitar to the 1996 or 1997 one that I bought used last year, and then sold, and didn't tell you. Sorry I didn't tell you, but I bought the, um, the, the original 90s one and sold it because I just couldn't get on with it. I don't know if it's because it was used and therefore abused, but this one already feels like a much more playable guitar, and it is slightly different to the original and the first reissue. I'm gonna plug it in. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get the Boss DS1 already, okay? We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna need it, I'll get that. The question is, which Boss DS1? Because I have, I think around 13 now, 12, 11, 13. Um, this is some of them, and, and there's also a clone, and then there's the more uh, Ultra Drive, which is a, a cracking little pedal. There's the DS2, we're gonna need that. And then, where's Rene? Rene, there's Rene. Rene is one of my favorite ones. I don't know why it's called Rene, I bought it used. It had Rene written on it. It's a made in Taiwan. Um, there's the Japanese one. There's the Japanese silver screw. We're gonna go, we're gonna go Japanese black screw. That's what we're gonna go for. So. Pedal's plugged in and it's 12 volts. I've just remembered to change the power supply over and I must not fry any pedals. I must remember that's 12 volts because it's the Japanese version. Switching it on. Red light is where it should be. And um, let's hear it. <laughs> feels so tiny in my hands. It is uh, wonderful. It's wonderfully cute. It feels great. There's a there's a sh there's a tightness to it. There's a response that it just kind of you you hit it and then it kind of dies and wants to be hit again. I love it. I love it more than the 90s version I had. The 90s version that I had was used and abused and and certainly not set up at all when I got it and I did a setup and I still never really fell in love with it. This this just feels right, um, even though even though the strings are thin, I think that's I think that's nines on there because we've got a twenty four inch scale. I'll go over the specs in a little bit. I just want to get across the fact that this feels so much fun. And any naysayers out there who say a Jagstang is not authentic enough or, or whatever, it is fun. So take away from the fact that it's a Kurt Cobain guitar. I'm having fun with this combination of guitar, pedal, and amp. And frankly, that's all that really matters to me. Ha <laughs> ha! That sounds wonderfully AM. DS1. For me, with the Nirvana sound, it's always about the percussive. Okay, let's uh, let's just do neck then without any pedals, just so you can hear what the Kurt Cobain guitar would sound like if it were clean.
even though that's the neck pickup, it's still kind of raspy. It's still twangy, like it's banky and and if you're looking for a guitar to fit in a mix that needs to pop out somewhere but still be quite rhythmic, that's a good tone for just popping out. It's, you can hear the new strings. Okay, let's turn that off and let go to the bridge. That's bassier than the neck pickup. Have I got this round the right way? Yeah, that is that pickup. That's definitely the bridge pickup, but it, it sounds bassier than, than the neck. Neck. I like that. So you're getting like this thick, full um, bridge sound. Let's turn them both on. It is so small in my hands that the tiny little vintage frets. Anyway, let's do specs. Okay, specs of the 2021 a Jagstang from Fender. It has an older body, which is surprisingly heavy feeling. There's some weight in there. I'm gonna weigh it in a little moment to get an accurate um, understanding of how heavy it is. We've got a maple neck, which even though it's not bird's eye or anything like that, there's kind of this figuring on there. So it's a basic maple neck but it does look a little bit special. Then we've got a rosewood fretboard, which has got 22 frets and they are vintage. So they are thin and they are short and they're tiny. And it feels like you're hardly having to press strings at all, even if you're not big like me. So I'm, a consi I'm considerably bigger than Kurt Cobain was. I am six foot four on a good day. So I'm nearer Chris Novoselic, never pronounced his name properly. I grew up in the West country of England. Um, yeah, I'm more more bass player and, than I am Kurt Cobain, who was a smaller person. And if you are a smaller person, this guitar would be pretty spot on for someone because you hardly have to press the strings. But when you do, and you do thrash it, it feels so responsive. <laughs> Um, got a bit funny at the end. We've got a, a nut that Fender don't say what it is. So I'm guessing it's plastic, but it doesn't seem to be binding at all. So that's fine. Uh, turn it off. We've got vintage style tuners. They're not Fender stamped or anything, but they they feel nice. They feel quality. They're straightish. Yeah, I mean, they're straightish, but also it's a vintage style Fender-ish. On the back, we've got an F stamped neck plate, which um, I'm, I'm gonna take the, the, the stuff off. Oh, that didn't go as well as I thought it would. 
Oh yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's so satisfying. Except that there's a little bit stuck under the screw. Why do they always do that? Anyway, um, what else can I tell you? The pickups. The pickups are Jagstang and Jagstang. So they don't have a name, really. They're just called Jagstang Single Coil and Jagstang Custom Humbucker. We've got three-way switches. So each switch can do three different positions. We've got that way. It's for this pickup, turning it on. And in the middle, turns that pickup off. Over there, turns that pickup on but in a different phase. So that doesn't matter to the tone unless, because uh, that pickup's off at the moment, that way we'd have both pickups on and in phase, and that way we'd have both pickups on and out of phase, or like that is auto, also out of phase. Both pickups off. So if you've got no tone coming from your Jagstang, check that your pickups aren't off. Also on, on, off. It has a Mustang style bridge on it, which, is the sort of bridge that you would get if you wanted to replace your Jazzmaster or something. It works fine. Um, everything is as it should be. The only thing that's a bit weird is the color. The color is Fiesta Red, but it's it's certainly more burnt Fiesta Red than it is the, what's it, the Dakota Red sort of combination that I've seen on some of the websites. Like on Toman, the color looks a lot darker and a lot more Dakota Red. This is more orange uh, and paler. I did say I'd talk about the tram, even though I'm never going to use it, or I, I don't think I am. Um, there, turn it on. Turn the pickup on. I might eat my words at some other point. I think that that is a good tram and we're still in tune, are we? We're pretty close, but the nut did not bind, nothing popped or creaked, um, nothing, I didn't I didn't dive bomb it. Should I dive, I should dive bomb it. Hang on, I'll pick up the tram bar. Right, here we go. Oop, turn it on. That's impressive. I have pulled the strings out and you know and tuned it a few times, like four times I think, since the beginning of the video. But that's that's an in-tune tremolo. All right, you didn't come here for clean tones, did you? You came here for more distortion. So let's try the pickups again, in phase, out of phase, on, off, with the Boss DS1. It is an extremely thrashy guitar. I'm sure that other players could get other tones out of it and some nice cleans and some beautiful overdrives. But in this video, 
I'm convinced by the fact that this, turn that off, this guitar is, is made for thrashing around. And I don't want to backtrack, but on that neck pickup, it does, it does sound quite nice, clean, like quite thin. Also, as a, as a criticism, the neck pickup or what's coming from the neck pickup is a lot louder than what's coming from, reverse that. I may have said neck when I meant bridge a few times. The, what's coming from the bridge pickup is louder than what's coming from the neck pickup. And the neck pickup seems to be seated quite, uh, quite low in the body. Can you see that, 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 how low that is? I don't know if that needs to be brought up if it's supposed to be like that, but certainly I would wanna bring that up if I wanted a little bit more balance between the two pickups. But as far as I'm concerned, tone-wise, that bridge pickup is where it's at and thrashing around. As a personal preference, I'm not sure about the vintage spec uh, fret, fret wire. It, it, it is, it, there is some fret sprout just up here. It does need attention. It's not terrible. It's not cutting my hand, but I can feel it. And then down here, I just maybe it's just to look at. It is super, super skinny, and that's odd as a player. I'm normally a sort of medium jumbo kind of person, but uh, the rest of the guitar absolutely is wonderful. Uh, I'm going to play some more riffs on it just for fun, and then um, and then see what else we can talk about. In fact, let's down tune it. <laughs> Okay, now I'm getting into the guitar, now I'm finding things I don't actually like. Because of the, the size of my hands and the size of the fretboard and the seven and a quarter inch uh, radius and the fret wire, it's kind of hard for me to play anything that's up here. Yeah, it's going to take some learning. So compared to like a Strat or even a Les Paul, there's a lot less space going on. It's a lot harder to fit my fingers in. Um, and I've been playing a telly a lot recently and the Harley Benton telly that I, I, I made a video for the other day. Um, very, very different. So that might put off some people, but I think, I think I could, I think I could shim the neck a little bit. So I'll bring the neck up to break, take the action down just a little bit, the truss rod could also be straightened out a little bit just to reduce that spacing because I feel like I'm I'm hopping over the strings that's an issue <laughs> Also, because it's there's a lot of um, it's very bendy. The strings are very bendy. It's very easy for me to flub a note and, and bend it out of tune. But it is reminding me of my playing style in the 90s. It, it has certainly taken me back to how I used to play and these riffs are bringing out a side of me that I've forgotten existed. Um, it's quite expensive, 1,200 and something euros, 1,239 and then in dollars and, and pounds as well. That's not um, the sort of guitar I could have afforded when I was a teenager, for example. It is about actually the same price that I paid for my 90s version. I don't know, I don't know about the collectability of this, but if you're just buying it as a guitar, that's a, 
that's a tough sell, I think. I know it's a commemorative edition for the 30 years of Nevermind. Oh, that's a tough pill to swallow. 30 years of Nevermind. Ouch. But, um, can it be? Yeah, it is. Good Lord. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a guitar. And as for making music and made in, in Mexico, 1,200 euros, quite a lot of money. I don't know if anyone that I know would be prepared to part with that if they weren't into the nostalgia of the Nirvana thing. So I don't know. I'd love to know what you think on that. Like, do you see this as just a Nirvana guitar or do you see it as something that is quirky enough to fit into other places? I think sonically, it certainly does Nirvana well, but I think that neck pickup played by the right player could certainly unlock another side of this guitar that I'm not going to in this video. I have to say that it is really well built and some people have problems with Mexican guitars. You should have no problem with this whatsoever. The hardware is good. The pickups are good. Everything seems fine. Um, I am interested to know what's going on inside this jack socket, but we're going to open it up in a different video. Uh, sorry, jack plate. We'll open it up in a different video. Also, I'm going to compare it to, hold on a second, my Kurt Cobain Jaguar, which is considerably heavier. Ah, I said I was going to weigh it, didn't I? So there's the two together and they look pretty decent together. Just looking up on monitor there. I thought that one was going to be a lot smaller. It doesn't. We'll do that in another video. I'm not going to, I'm going to wet your whistle by saying I will do that. Man, that Jaguar is a heavy, heavy guitar. Um, okay. Let's just weigh this one before we say sayonara or um, another word for goodbye. There we go. In pounds, this guitar weighs. Come on, fishing for Jagstang. Fishing for Jagstang. I had to use two hands, that's cheating. Um, I've gone guitar fishing and I've caught one that weighs eight pounds, for 17, eight, 8.17 pounds. What? And in in kilograms, where's that? In kilograms, that is what, four. Three point three point seven two five. So these are you know it's not exactly accurate, but wow, that is a heavy guitar, especially for the size. Uh, it must be the older body. It certainly isn't the neck. Um, so, ladies and gentle spoons, the Fender Jagstang is. Um, quite a heavy guitar. That surprised me. What I mean is those numbers don't surprise me, but it, it does surprise me this guitar is so heavy. So was the original basswood, basswood? I think the original was basswood or basswood. Again, correct me on that in the comments. It is the end of this video. I've had so much fun playing this. I'm going to play it some more, learn or relearn some old Nirvana riffs and bring it back to you. We'll do a comparison with the Jaguar. And also I might do a video where I, I just do some favorite Nirvana riffs because why not? The Distortion DS10, yeah, uh, I just stuck with that. I didn't feel it was necessary to plug anything else in, but I will do in a future video. You've made it to the end, which means you're a member of the end of the video club. Congratulations. And because you have made it this far, please prove that you fit in this excellently, wonderfully um, prestige group of people. When you leave your comment telling me what you think of the unboxing and the first impressions of this Fender Jagstang, Please also include the phrase in bloom. And that lets me know that you made it this far in the video and we can all have a jolly good giggle at how many people write that in the comment section. Thanks for doing that. As I said, I'll be back with the Jagstang very, very shortly. So subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. And don't forget to smoosh the thumbs up. Thanks for doing that. I'll see you in another video or at some point in the future. Bye bye.